Yeah, it started in a, uh, a number of people that uh, were expecting here in person. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Heidi, you've got uh, some templates uh, in your packet. And one thing you might want to start doing as we, as you're kind of waiting, we've got those pre cut out here in the room. You might want to start cutting those out. Okay. Uh, save a little time later on when we get to those projects. The virtual participants who receive their materials have their templates pre cut, Scott. All right, well, never mind me. Thank you, Kylie. And the lady who did all the cutting actually on her cricket machines. So Thanks, he's our hero. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Are you waiting for some friends? Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, come on in whenever you're ready. Make yourself at home. We've got some snacks over here, bagels and other munchies. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Judy. Good to see you guys here. Thanks for joining us. <coughs> we are um, Waiting for a few more people to show up here in person. Yeah, almost 20 people sign up. So we're hoping that we get a good percentage of those to. It's foggy here, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, we have kind of a foggy morning, so it might be a little delay on that. Have someone to come in so yeah, if you're if you're joining us virtually, um, we have snacks here. Help yourself to your own snacks. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some bagels and some like, trail mix and coffee and things. If you've got better snacks, feel free to chime in and let us know what you're eating. He's Hey, Janice and Judy, um, you want to just either in the chat or let us know where are you where are you chiming in from? Oh, Janice from Vancouver. All right, welcome. You've joined us. Uh, I think you've joined us each time, haven't you? Judy from Detroit. Awesome. Oh, it just finished lunch. Yeah. Forget about time zones. Yeah. <laughs> Judy just finished lunch and we're, we're eating bagels for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> My breakfast hasn't settled yet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Janice, no worries. Thanks for joining us. Hey, welcome. Come on in. We'll start in just a few moments. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, warm coffee and no, that, I mean that's Steve but behind Steve is some warm coffee and there's some um, bagels and some other treats over there help yourselves hey, how you doing good to see you guys <coughs> all right so we're kind of all over the place today we've got Vancouver we've got Detroit we've got Chicago wow Fresno Sanger I mean it's all over <laughs> Uh, my son-in-law teaches science at WAMS in the middle school. So, yeah. You guys are from the early early learning. Yes, I'll be able What age kids do you work with? We work with infants. Wow. Like zero to. 
one zero two 18 months 18 months, 18 months. 18 months. okay the little littles yeah. <laughs> that's the super cute <laughs> I think we signed up for another one too in the back end of the ones that we want to call. I think that they do an emergency and then we have one more. I don't know. Michelle, if everybody wants to snacks, thank you. Okay, yeah, let me start. Let's start about three, four minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, Good morning. Thank you for Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys from? Um, I teach in Central Unified. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What grade? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. Also, is a few students? No, I'm a friend today. Oh, okay. Glad to you here. A couple more minutes. We'll finish grabbing their snacks here and we'll, we'll get started. Thank you everybody for joining us today. things to do today. Welcome everybody to our January play shop. You may have been to workshops before where you sit and listen to lectures or take notes or do other things, but this is our uh, Ames play shop where we will share some information, but then generally just spend a lot of time playing together. Um, welcome to everybody in the room. We also have some people online joining us. We've got people from Chicago and Detroit and Vancouver. Um, so we're kind of all over the place this morning or afternoon, as the case may be, wherever you're chiming in from. Um, my name is Scott Nielsen, and uh, we also have in the room Elin Anderson and Steve Pauls, who are Ames Play Shop directors with me. And uh, if you have any questions or need suggestions or whatever, just want to share an idea, they're here with us. We also have online Kyleen. Um, those of you who are remote with us today, Kyleen's the one who shipped all the materials out to you and has gotten a lot of the prep work done for today. So thank you, Kyleen, for that. Um, 
We are, um, let's see. Okay, there we go. Um, we have a <clears throat> website called Miro. I'm not sure if you are or, uh, familiar with Miro. <clears throat> um, let's see. Can one of you guys let uh, Rowena into the meeting? Somebody's in the waiting room. Um, if you uh, have a device, uh, you can scan that QR code. And Miro is a place where it's kind of just a community bulletin board. Uh, and if you want to take pictures of what we do today, or maybe even something in the future and post them on there, or make comments or ask questions, it's kind of a fun place to do that. Um, <coughs> our mural board and um, so there's four sections and each section is related to one of our play shops so you can uh, go on there and look at um, there are some things from our symmetry play shop that we did earlier this year and then we right before uh, the break christmas break we did some holiday light up cards and so we're down here today with leaving around the world. If you wanted to, um, you could enter one of your favorite winter activities. And the way this works, you can just click over here for a sticky note, pick a color and slap it on there. And if you just kind of start typing, um, and it just auto types in there. One of the things I like to do is take some brisk morning walks in the winter. We've got a cute little basset hound and the basset likes to go walking in the morning. So, um, but then there's a spot here to add some pictures if you want and a spot for some questions and comments. Here. All right, so today uh, we are talking all about weaving and weaving around the world. Uh, at the end, Elin is gonna share some kind of cultural and historical uh, connections to weaving. Um, we're gonna start with some really simple weaving ideas and we'll, we'll play for a while and then we'll um, um, do something a little bit more complex with weaving. Uh, one of our associate directors, um, Aileen, is going to join us, and she actually hasn't been feeling well lately, so she's going to join us online and lead us through weaving some stars and baskets, and then we'll just do some more playing and talk about variations, and we'll go from there. Um, if you've been with us before, uh, we've kind of changed our setup. We had little table groups around before, and what we noticed is people didn't really interact between tables. So we, we're trying this today. Um, we really want this to be interactive and a community feel, so feel free on your way to a bagel, look at what other people are doing, look across the table, say, you know, ask, hey, what are you doing over there? Let me see you hold it up or whatever. Okay, so we're just all kind of playing together. If you picture this as a giant sandbox and we're all playing in the same sandbox. Okay, um, so let's start talking about weaving. Basic weaving ideas um, have two parts. And um, a lot of times when we think about weaving, we think about fabrics and, um, uh, you know, those kind of textile materials. We're going to start with paper. In fact, a lot of the weaving we're going to do today is just with paper. But the idea is the same. And the two parts are a vertical part called a warp and then a horizontal part called a weft. And actually, the, the word history of the word weave, the word weave is just a variation on that second word weft. Um, so over time, the word weft has turned into the word weave. Um, and this starts off historically, of course, just by doing it by hand and then 
along the uh, away some point somebody designed a mechanical process um, that became a loom and then those were eventually motorized and we were able to you know weave very very quickly but the concept has never really changed there's one set of materials going one way and then the the weft or the weave goes in the other way so we'll start with that on your tables are some materials. Um, the boxes have scissors and pens and rulers and all kinds of stuff. For our first thing, you're gonna want um, a marker or a pencil or a pen and a ruler and some scissors. Um, back by Steve in the back also, there are, we put some paper out on the tables if you don't like those colors. There's different colors and different materials in the back. Feel free at any time to go grab some more of those. Those are you who are at home. Um, stuff you with these simple um, beginning weeds. Don't feel locked into what exactly was sent your way. If you have other colors of paper that you would prefer to use, feel free to use those as well. So we're going to start with... Just a real simple, I call it a checkerboard weave. And we start by making the warp. And there's several different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a way to do it, not the way to do it. It's a way that we found to be successful with kids of lots of different ages. And um, we have, what's great about this group also is we have uh, a lot of educators with us um, so that you might be thinking about, you know, how would I do this with class? How would I do this with kids? Um, but I would also encourage you to think um, doing this just for yourself, just for fun. Uh, I find this to be kind of a peaceful activity, very stress relieving and um, so let's, let's play a little bit. And I'm going to keep my camera here. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll start by making the warp. And all we need is a solid piece of paper. The size of paper doesn't matter. I'm using an eight and a half by 11 piece. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my ruler up on top of the paper and align that front, align the top edges. And I'm just using the width of the wolf ruler as a guide and I'm gonna, oops, a little crooked line. And I'm gonna draw a line across the top there. One great thing about what we're doing, and I'll even show some other examples of this later, is perfection doesn't matter. <laughs> this does not have to be done perfectly. So if, you're, if your line is a little higher, or a little lower, it doesn't matter. I think that's showing up okay on the camera. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some little tick marks across on that line. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to make them one inch apart. So I lined up my left hand edge with the zero, and now I'm just going to put a little, little tick mark at every inch. There's nothing magic about an inch. You could go a half inch, three quarters. Nine sixteenths, if you wanted to, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> One reason I'm choosing an inch is because the paper I'm going to use for my weave is also an inch across. So I'm going to end up making some nice squares. They don't have to be squares. Okay, now I'm going to slide down to the bottom and somewhere close to the bottom, and it doesn't really matter where, I'm going to make some tick marks across here as well, also an inch apart.
Yeah, if at any time I've gone too quick, just holler out or throw in the chat. Elin's keeping an eye on the chat for us. <clears throat> now with my straight edge, I'm just going to connect those tick marks. So we have a series of vertical lines. So we are creating the warp. These are the vertical pieces that we will then weave in between. Making a series of vertical lines. You might be wondering, could we do this with the paper oriented the other way in what would that be, portrait mode? Absolutely. You do this the other direction as well, and the vertical lines could go the other way. And now we're just going to take some scissors and we're going to cut those lines. And that, that first line that I drew across the top, I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to cut all the way across. And basically, we're kind of making a giant comb shape. And that, that piece across the top then just serves to hold the warp together so I don't have strips of paper going everywhere. Again, perfection is not required. So if you um, are envisioning yourself doing this with young learners who might still be uh, developing some fine motor skills, you can't quite cut a perfect straight line. It doesn't matter. They will just have some unique shapes in their weave. And that's okay. So we just end up with the uh, vertical lines like this. A lot of people like lifting it up and looping it around and say, look, I mean, a hula skirt or I mean, a crown or a something or other. So you're probably thinking, man, there's nothing magic about this. I did this when I was in second grade. You're absolutely right. <laughs> this is not earth shattering stuff. <laughs> this is just kind of getting the basic idea and then we're going to throw some variations in. It's good just to start and see. I like it as blue color today. Uh, if you have some strips on your tables, uh, again, feel free to use those, or there's some other colors in the back if you want to go grab some different colors. That is fine as well. Um, another thing you may want to grab is a little bit of tape. I find that sometimes taping these is very helpful. Now the way the way I do this, and again, this isn't the way to do it. This is just a way to do it. Because all the marks here are on the paper, I really don't want those to show up. 
when my weave is done. So I'm really, I'm really seeing this as the back of my project, whereas the, the front end will have no marks on it. So I kind of, I, I envision this turning out different on the flip side. Although with the checkerboard, it's, it's really going to be this. So all we do now is take a strip of paper and to make the checkerboard weave, we simply follow a real simple pattern of going over one of the warps and then under one and over one and under one. And just keep going back and forth like that. And now you can probably see why it's handy to, to have these held together at the top because trying to do this with strips that weren't <laughs> secured somehow would be pretty chaotic. Then once that is through, I end up, I'm just going to push that all the way to the top. And this is where I find it handy to take a little piece of tape and just stick it on the end there and hold it in place. And I know that looks kind of weird and ugly, but again, this is the back of my project. But when I turn this over, the tape's certainly not going to show up, and all I see is the pieces popping out. <clears throat> And that pushing up process is, is kind of interesting. If you've ever seen a mechanical loom work with, with fabric being woven, um, the, the thread will be woven through, and then there's actually physically a bar that comes and pushes everything to the top. So we're, we're doing something very similar to that with paper. So to continue our checkerboard pattern, I'm going to just keep doing that same thing with my strips, but I'm going to alternate the pattern. So on the first one, I went over and then under. This time, I'm going to start under and then go over and then keep going back and forth. And it really, I find it easiest to do this down towards the bottom where the warp is most flexible and then just push it up once that gets done. Just push that as far up as it will go, just nice and tight in there. And one thing that tape helps with is, um, I, I kind of tend to be a little clumsy. And so if my original pieces aren't taped down, as I'm weaving the next one, the first one kind of gets a little wonky. So that's where the tape helps. So I like, not a requirement, but I find it helpful to just take each one down as I go, and then I know they're going to stay in place. And I don't have to worry about them getting weird. But then, just taking on the other side, we can already see that checkerboard idea developing. And now we're just going to keep going. So now I'm going to go back to my original pattern of over, then under. Somebody has a meeting in 10 minutes. <laughs> How are we doing? Pretty good? Any questions?
Going back and forth, changing the pattern, alternating the pattern. We do it online. Elin, any comments or chat comments? No comments. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody's coming busy. Everybody's busy. Busy weaving. Busy weaving. That's good. <clears throat> Going well. Oh, good. Okay. I don't know if anybody else is kind of sensing it, but I already feel my blood pressure going down. I love this activity. It's just a nice, relaxing. Take your mind off of other things. You can sit and have a conversation. You know, it's not surprising that a lot of communities used to have quilting circles. Just sit around and quilt and weave and talk and keep up on family news and gossip. <laughs> Anybody got any good gossip? <laughs> Sometimes that last piece gets a little challenging because there's not a lot of space left at the bottom. Different types of paper you'll find um, have different kind of weave qualities. Using cardstock is sometimes a little easier for younger kids. It's because it's a little stiffer, it doesn't bend or tear quite so easily. But at the same time, it, it pops up and down because it's a little thicker. I think what I'm using is cardstock. Regular copy paper thickness um, can be a little easier. But again, it, it kind of tears and folds a little easier also. So different qualities to each kind of paper. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Ooh, my last piece. If I flip that over, there's my sticker board. All right, we already have some variations going on over here. Perfect. Um, I just put it kind of on the end. Um, you might want to, is that the top of your head? You might want to pull that as far as you can. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look at that. We already got some great variations that we've been talking about. So what I'm seeing around the room is um, people are using different colors. You know, I just used um, a two color scheme. Some people in the room are using three and four different colors, changing the color of the strip as they go down. We've got some different thicknesses, some different widths of the warp and the weave. That's great. You're already thinking about some variations. And really that's where the play comes in. Um, the play is just thinking about what can we do differently? So I have some examples here of some different variations. Um, so this one uses two different colors, but also uses a different pattern. So um, instead of just going over and under and over and under, I went over two and under one, and over two and under one. So just changing the pattern scheme and then rotating that. So here's over one, which really there's kind of, if you picture another square there, this would be two and then one and two and one and two and one. And then it's moving across that way. Pretty nice little variation, but also then using two different colors. Here's one I like, because this really shows that perfection doesn't matter. Okay, I didn't even use scissors on this. I just tore it, just tore the paper and did a simple checkerboard pattern. And so working with young kids, you know, I can't cut straight, so what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Cut crazy. It makes, still, I think it's still make kind of a cool design. And again, on this, I, I didn't even use scissors. I just tore the paper. Another variation. So what if what if our warp wasn't parallel lines? So on this one, I just I made these top marks. Actually, maybe I can even show you on the back. I made these top tick marks a half or a quarter inch apart. I made the bottom ones a half inch apart. So it kind of kept spreading out on the bottom. And then use different thicknesses of the weave as well. I think that's a quarter inch and a half inch, and this is three quarters. Actually, I think that's a full inch. No, that's a half inch. Yeah, that's a half. This is a full inch. This is an inch and a half. And back to a half inch. We're doing the, some comments from uh, our circle participants uh -huh. like that one. <laughs> this one? Yes. Yeah, Very sure. Cool. I'll put that up on Etsy later today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So just different variations, lots of different things we can do. And here's kind of a something interesting to think about. You may not know, but with these different, different patterns, 
you know, with our with our clothing, and you might you, know, you might see um, different kind of cultures weaving baskets or uh, other kind of textile materials using all kinds of different really intricate patterns. Um, a lot of our early computer coding wasn't done so that we could add numbers. It was done for weaving. Um, so as people developed the codes that would develop different patterns in textiles, that's where early computer coding actually came from. Um, if you know anything about binary numbers, um, this is, and just think about how binary this is. It's either above or it's below. It's either on or it's off. It's either a one or a zero. Um, and so you could actually write this out as a binary code of what's going to go above, what's going to go below. So if you're working with um, older students um, and you want to throw a different number base at them, have them do some weaving. Really interesting way to approach that. So uh, I think at this point, we will just play. So let's, let's play for a while. Make another weave. Make three or four more weaves. Uh, we'll just play for a while. I'm, I'm going to show um, this, this one. One, one thing that a lot of people like about this one is it's kind of a three-dimensional look. While, while everybody's playing, I'm going to kind of talk through another way to do um, almost ends up looking kind of like a cube, um, three-dimensional weave. If you want to play along, great. If you want to try some of your own variations, that's great as well. Um, let, me, let me kind of jump in and share this with you uh, real quickly. So another variation is using different kinds of materials or different shapes. Um, so here's some that Aileen did. A little while back. So what if our what if our warp and weave wasn't just rectangular? So we can do heart shapes or um, on that middle picture, she did the variation of changing the warp so it's not just parallel lines. <laughs> what if we did a weave where you spell out a spell out a word? Um, I did that that piece one, and, and what I did is I took a piece of graph paper, and I actually had to draw out representing each square and put an X on the like I want this one to go over, and I want this one to go under, and this one to go over. So I actually had to map it out on graph paper because I couldn't keep it straight in my head where <laughs> what I wanted to go over and under to make that look right. That one on the right, just using some different materials, I had an old vinyl record album cover. So I cut it apart, and that's just the front of the album and the back of the album woven together. And it started as a checkerboard, then realized, oh, I want some of those words to show out. And I want his face to show up. So a checkerboard would have blocked off parts of his face. So I wanted it to stick. So it's not a true checkerboard, but I thought that one was kind of cool. And of course, John Coltrane is pretty cool. So. <laughs> And what if you don't use paper? Here's some things I made out of wood. Um, the one on the left is just some giant barbecue skewers that I wove in and out of each other, just in a regular checkerboard pattern, but because they're thin, they look that way. The one on the right is just some wood slats that I had that I wove together. They were thin enough to bend. Took a lot of glue and a lot of clamps, but <laughs> it stuck that way. So lots of different things we can we can play with. If you you know we're just past the holidays, if you got some extra wrapping paper sitting around, you can weave with wrapping paper in different ways. The front versus the back, or you know, different kinds of wrapping paper. Um, and some weaving with uh, cardboard strips. Weave with. Gosh, you can weave with just about anything. So. All right, so um, let's just keep playing. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through a kind of three-dimensional cube kind of shape. 
If you want to play along, great. If you want to do something different, great. I'm going to choose some colors here. I'll have my background be bluish, purplish color. I'm somewhat colorblind, so I'm guessing what color that is. Is there, is there, is there a certain color you want? It's not a uh, I like doing this one on, with black as a background, but I don't think that it'll show up well on the camera with the marker. So yeah. I'll just stick with that. Those colors go together? Yeah, uh, a light and a... Yeah. yeah. I just want to give anybody a headache. <laughs> <laughs> FU colors. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. There's no seven sunburn colors. Right. <laughs> Okay, so to make this three dimensional one, if you want to follow along with this, I'm actually going to start by making a fold in my work paper. I'm just going to fold that straight down the middle. So that I have a crease in the middle. I turn that to portrait mode or toward, turn it this way so that the, the crease runs horizontally across the middle. Then I'm going to fold that up so that I'm going to have the crease on the bottom. And I draw a line across the top. Make that. Oh, yeah, I'll go ahead and make that. You know what? God, I'm not going to use that orange. I've got some yellow strips here already pre cut, so I'm going to use those. There's a question. You have it this way? Uh, I have it. Um, uh, so it's opening down. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like a taco shell. Oh. Right. And then I put that line across the top. Uh huh. Yeah. Great question. <clears throat> now instead of just putting a bunch of tick marks across here, I actually want to find the middle of this. So if I've got eight and a half inches across. All right, free bagel for anybody who was half of eight and a half. <laughs> Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Yay. All right, good. Go get a bagel. I'm going to mark that right in the middle at four and a quarter. And I'm going to come down here at the bottom and make a mark at four and a quarter. And I'm going to draw. My first line, so that that line goes straight down the middle. So I've got kind of a T shape. And again, if it's not perfectly in the middle, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Now what I'm going to do is starting starting at the middle, these tick marks on this top line, I'm not going to make them one inch apart. I'm going to make them, so I'll make these a half an inch apart. Every half inch, I'll put a tick mark. I don't need to go all the way out to the edge, and you'll see why in just a second. I put one, two, three, four, five, six. That's even too many. Now I'm going to do the same thing going the other way. 
put a tick mark every half inch. Uh, I put five on one side. I know I'm not going to need five. I put six over here. So here, let me show you why I know I don't need that many because at the bottom, I'm going to make them wider. Uh, at the bottom, and I want these actually to be right at the bottom of my paper, right, right on this crease. Right on that crease. So I'm going to put these one inch apart. So I'm making sure that my middle line is on an inch mark. So there's one, two, three, and uh, that one's a little close to the edge. I might just I might just leave that alone. So yeah, so um, I've only got three marks here because what I'm going to do is that I'm going to connect these tick marks. And they're, they're going to end up being not parallel. Yeah, so it looks like I only needed three. And I ran out of space on the bottom. So that's all I need. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I just forgot how many I needed. Turns out only three on each side of the middle line. So these two, I didn't need those. These three, I didn't need those. Wrong stuff. Where do I put the lines on the bottom? Uh, I put them one inch apart. To the cross? Uh, so if this is my middle line. Right here's the middle. Um, yeah, so I just, I just marked over an inch, an inch, an inch, and then just connected them to those top. That makes did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you for asking. Did I lose you somewhere? That's okay. Right. Okay, okay. Sometimes I think I'm explaining really well and I'm not, so <laughs> don't be afraid to ask. So then the idea here is with that crease on the bottom again. So if I open this up, here's my crease in the middle. I've got my lines that are going from my top mark just down to the crease and stopping. <clears throat> I'm going to fold that back up. I'm going to cut these lines. And I'm cutting through both layers of the paper so that if I open that up, what happens is I, I get uh, I get a warp that comes down to the crease and then turns and goes back the other way. And on both ends, I'm connected. A little, a little smiley face here. <laughs> And if you make a mistake, guess what? Paper's cheap. Try again. If you're doing some other variation, great. Keep going. Post it on Miro board. We can all see it. Okay, so cut all those lines. 
But when I open this up, a bunch of non-parallel warp cuts. And again, it's connected at the bottom. So these aren't just free flowing, they're, they're still attached there. And it's connected at the top. That's kind of cool, just like that. That looks like kind of one of those lanterns. Lanterns, yeah. Uh -huh. right. Welcome to the lantern play shop, everybody. <laughs> hmm. I might do now. Just to make this easier, I'm going to pull this back the other way so that I'm not fighting that crease. So that can... Okay, so I'm just going to do a basic checkerboard weave on this with one slight difference from the first one we did. I'm going to start by going on top and then underneath. And again, I'm, I'm seeing this as the back of my design, not the front. I'll turn it over just a second. Go on top, and underneath, and top. You know, the difference is on our original weave, I pushed this up to the top. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to push it down here to the middle. And I want this first weave to be right there in the middle. So that the edge of this weave strip is exactly on the crease. You can see where we go. There's the crease. Right and it's pretty, pretty useful on this one to definitely keep that in. You don't want that to move. strip, I'm going to weave on the other side of this crease, and I'm going to do the opposite pattern that I just did. So instead of starting on top, I'm going to start underneath. Push this up so that the top edge of this crease, or the top edge of this weave, is right up against that crease in the middle of the paper, also. Now, um, if we turn this over, and ultimately, I, I know I'm weaving with it in portrait mode. Ultimately, it looks really cool if it's in landscape mode. Now, I'm just going to start at the middle and work my way out to the edges. 
So I do that on the back. Again, I still find it easier to read with it in portrait mode than dirty paper. So I'll start here in the middle and work my way down, alternating uh, what I did before. I started this under, so this will go over. You might be noticing that I have some of my weave pieces that are kind of flying loose here on the hands. I'm not worried about that. Those are going to get cut off. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. I think I can get one more in here. This last one might be a little snug, a little challenging, but I think I can do it. Again. This is where cardstock is definitely easier than the regular copy kind of paper. I My help is to smooth those a little bit longer. Make this a little more roomy. Cutting that so I don't tear it accidentally. There you go. Oh, much easier. If you really, really like weaving, there's an art form called quilling. Oh, what? Quilling. 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 Where you can buy thin rainbow, all kinds of colored strips that are three to five millimeters in diameter and length and width. Oh. And make very small. Very small. <laughs> <laughs> Use that finger as well. Thank you. <laughs> I like uh, inch wide strips with construction or hard stuff. <laughs> Quilling. Okay. 
So I've kind of got half of this done. And maybe to show you where I'm going with this, what I'm going to do, certain things that we have, we probably didn't put these in there. I find it easy to do with an exacto knife. Let's see if I can do it with scissors. But I'm going to take um, from this point on the bottom up to the corner, anything that's on top, I cut it off. Like right on top of that piece, that I might even pull this down. Or, uh, I can't, I can't this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I don't think I can do this with scissors. So I'm going to use my pocket knife instead of an exact knife. <laughs> We get this nice, nice clean line here, and I'll do that same thing on the top. <clears throat> Oh, I can have the perfect amount of strips left. Good. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the back. Now I'm just going to go the other direction. <clears throat> so this one started under, so I'll start over. lesson here. And that, pull it out a little bit and cut it. And then push it back in and then tape it in. That's how you can do that with scissors. That there. Just seeing the back of this being so different than the front, it reminds me of the artists that make um, area rugs or Persian rugs. And you can always tell a super high quality Persian rug because the back is just as neat as the front. And that's a true artist that does that. Clearly, that's not me. <laughs> so I'm just cheating all over on the back of this. We are fortunate enough to have one of those in our house. My brother in law at one point took a trip to Morocco. And went to an open air market where there was different vendors of authentic, high quality rugs that were hand woven. Pass that along to us. We need to see. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back under here. Uh, 
Something just dawned on me. I don't have to cut anything. I just pull that over here so that it's hidden behind here. We need to cut it. Been doing these for several years now. That never, I never figured that out. <laughs> you learn something new every. That's right. Every time you do it, you learn something new. I don't know if I just take that too. Okay. Let me learn from the other hand, though. And a little more space in here. Okay, it should be the last piece. Star. Let's go this way. I hope not everybody's following along on this. I hope other people are doing some other kind of cool variations, different weaving patterns. Okay, so instead of putting that through and having cut it off, I'm just going to leave that one behind. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> I didn't have to do that. We oh, like that blue and black. It's cool color combination. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to have to flip that over. I do have this one that I do need to cut. Check that off. And now all these pieces that are flying, I'm just going to cut those off by tying the edge here so they're not seen from the front. Not to be terribly accurate. Not making a high quality rug here. <laughs> Not going on Etsy. Not going on Etsy. <laughs> and we end up with this. And it kind of looks like it's popping out almost like a cube, kind of three dimensional kind of shape. So that's kind of cool. Fun, fun variation to do. Just starting with some non parallel lines with the warp. I suppose if I wanted to be super cheaty, I could take an extra piece of paper and cover up the back. <laughs> I'm going to take a I 
All right, so again, lots of variations, lots of different things to do. Start with something simple, change one little thing. It's amazing what can pop out. <laughs> So this variation, this is cool. Instead of um, having the middle wide, Ben here took that idea and made the, the middle narrow and the outside wide and made a kind of radial pattern. Great variation. Still, still, when you really look at it, it's still really simple concept. Still just some, some cuts that make your warp and some straight across weaves. Very nice. Did you want to take a picture of that? I'll put it on the mirror. So 18 months old, we can do this no problem. <laughs> All right, well, that's what I've got for you. We're not done playing yet. I'm going to leave you in the hands of Steve and Elin, and in a moment, at some point, Aileen will jump on, and he's going to lead you in some more weaving ideas, and we're going to actually go three-dimensional. Yeah. This is all just two-dimensional flat. I mean, technically, it's three-dimensional. <laughs> Paper has to be this, but just flat, but this time we're going to... Bump it up. Yeah. And pop out a little bit. I love your um, the blue and black one. Did you tear both the scripts and the the um 
the, yeah. the work. Yeah. This one here. Or just do Kirby, cut Kirby. Uh, you know what? I just, you're right. I just, uh, on this one, I did use scissors. I cut the warp, but I cut crooked on purpose. Uh -huh. And then I, I tore the, the weave pieces. Really, I just did that to show that perfection is not required. <laughs> Feel free to continue um, your weaving projects, explore. Um, while you're exploring, uh, I want to take a minute just to share with you uh, some handouts we have on, uh, on each at each setting. And feel free to take, take those. But all of our play shops this year are focused on um, really around exploring maker sooner learning. And I'm sure you, um, as you've been exploring the weaving, maybe already thinking about possibly um, ways that you can use um, a weaving type of activity in your classroom. Um, so the first, and for those of you attending virtually, um, you, should have, you should have received these in the materials Kyleen sent. Uh, we also have them in the middle of our mirror board. You can access them as a, as a PDF. But the first, the first handout is just an overview of making centered learning itself. And we're, we're, we really had a chance to explore this book, Maker Centered Learning. And so this, this infographic is really a synopsis of the big ideas in that book. And that really, um, if we think about who is a maker, it doesn't require any special skills. Um, everybody's a maker. And you can de obviously definitely learn through making. Children learn through making. Um, so, and we know that through making, through, through engaging in making activities, it, um, it really helps develop their student student's agency, their sense of, um, of self and empowerment. Uh, it also helps build character because a lot of times when you're engaged in making, it involves a lot of problem solving um, and collaborating with others. And the secondary benefits are obviously building specific content knowledge, if it's in if the, the activity is centered around a, a, a certain topic in the STEAM area, which is um, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, um, or maker specific knowledge and skills, like learning how to use a specific tool. Um, for those folks that are, are early ed educators, maybe it's just learning how to use scissors, working on that gross motor, those gross motor skills. Um, and then on the back, it just gives some examples of who and what are the teachers and in maker Center learning. Um, everybody has the opportunity to be a, a teacher, not just the actual teacher. Students actually become teachers and help you know, share what they're learning. And um, but then just what does it look like? Again, a lot of um, collaboration is involved, uh, inspiration and critique. So just in the making, we get inspired by what, by what others are making. Um, and we, it, we feed off of that and you get inspiration. And then that inspiration leads to another 
interesting um, idea. And then um, just it, again, building that that um, sense of agency and that students, you know, that I can do it. You know, I know that I know how to weave and this is something that I created. <laughs> So that's just sort of overview. It's a really great book if you ever have the opportunity to read it. And then along with that, we just have a few um, templates. Again, for those of you that are educators and are, th are, are maybe thinking about um, how to do a maker-centered uh, activity with your class, we have um, Tinkering to Discover where you're just using material um, and here exploring weaving and just to explore that. Um, there's, there's making to learn. So making to learn a specific, um, maybe working within a specific content area, or maybe the focus is really, um, again, in, within a content math, something just, Science related, and then um, an application. So, is this an activity where you want students to apply what they what they've learned? And these templates are very much just it's structured where it has some guiding questions around the preparation of the activity, um, activation. So, what's going to happen while you're engaging or having students engage in the activity? And then um, yeah, activation, and then always time for reflection. So there's the actual template, and then on the back, there's some examples. So this is meant to be very broad and open-ended. So we're thinking of our K-12 um, and actually TK and pre-K-12. Um, but just to give you some ideas of, of what some things you might think about as you're planning um, for an activity, an activity like this with, um, with students. So those of you that are here in person today, feel free to take these. Okay, so those of you that are here, just feel free to um, continue to explore. Um, we have, again, besides the paper that's on the table, there's uh, a wide variety of, of paper on the back that you can explore. <coughs> you have a game in the meeting. We have a Apparently her power went out all night long, so oh. we're getting her up and going. <coughs> That's what she wanted to add in, but she's in our meeting, and we'll for just a second. Good morning, Eileen. For our next um, activity, you are going to need uh, we're making this three-dimensional sphere. You're going to need um, two sets of these that are put together. So if you want to come over and pick your colors, like if you want to make one that's um, black and white, I would choose a black set of these and a white. So you can even grab two sets. Choose your colors. <laughs> Good morning, Can you hear us okay? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Welcome. Good morning. So I stopped my screen share. So if you wanted to share uh, yours at any time. I wanted to share. Um, my iPad. Is that working? No, it looks really good. All right. 
I thought it would do the to get people started on the star before the sphere, but I can start on the sphere and while you're gluing, I can go back to the star. What do you guys prefer? Uh, I think whatever you think is best. Uh, right now they're getting their colors for the, the materials for the sphere. Um, would you like them to have the star? I can, I can get, I think that that's good because Aileen, the sphere will take a little time with just gluing. Yes. I would start with the sphere. The virtual participants are getting the new one. Um, I want to put that new one in the chat. Okay. So they haven't had the opportunity to look at the new one yet. All right, everyone has their pieces, and I think they're all cut out, right? Oh, so let me get you started with the sphere, and it'll take a little time. Yesterday, I was thinking about some ways I could help with just the the first part of the gluing. And um, it really helped me to find the center of that small circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it in half. And your creases don't have to be really strong. They could be kind of light because I just wanna find the center. And then wherever those edges are, so you, I can tell where this point is and where this point is based on my crease. I'm gonna, I'm going to bring those together. There it goes. And then those two creases will help me find my center. Center point. Great, so in doing that, it will help us glue these pieces a little better. And I'm gonna show you how I started on this other circle, and then I'm gonna do a few on this one. But what we want to do is we're going to take each of these pieces and you'll see at the ends is like a little sector of a circle. And we want to make all of one color in throughout the circle. So that's 12 of the these color, this one color, which is pink. And, and all 12 should fit around that. All 12 should fit inside of that space up to where that little um, kind of notches right there. You can see a little bend here and a little corner or corner sticking out there. So when I was gluing it last time, I was thinking about, okay, so 
one thing that's hard is if I don't know where the center is, I don't know how far to go in. So that little center now will help you kind of guide where you want to start. And then as you continue really in that area with each of the ones all the way around. So I've done this circle just to show you, but this is the one that I would finish with the rest of the pieces that I have so that all 12 are those are fitting inside. Um, if you overlap a little, it's okay, especially as you get to the end. You just wanna be conscious that you don't wanna to overlap too much. So you wanna make sure that you're pretty, fitting them in pretty tightly around that small circle. That's what you'll do for each of the colors. So you'll have your one color, which mine is pink, and then I'll have another one, which is green. <laughs> so I'll glue a couple, I'll start gluing mine as you are starting. And it's just right on the edge, so. Oh, if you want to switch it out, if we have the ones, if you want to switch. Wanna, there should be another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get a different color. Mm -hmm. okay. So all twelve pieces are left. It's the same color. Yeah. Oh, you might be so sorry. You might hurt. Um, we should talk to you. Hi. 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 Glad you're here. Yeah, I got white and blue. Yeah, you have a mother. I have a mother. I want you so you want to have two. You must start with one. What color do you want? Is that blue? We'll have to try. Mm 
So if I was thinking about the, the different types of, of making to learn um, lessons or designs, I would, I would categorize this as an application for you as learners, because we're taking what you've learned or what you know about weaving and having you apply it in a more um, complex design. No, no, no. They're going to be all spread out. Um, see, this one, this is sort of not the really triangles. Yeah. 
can see this one. I still have one more. This is how close it gets. So this one in my lap overlap a little bit. We want to we want to try and get them as close as we can. See, they're all they all sort of meet in that the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is all right. Um, you can the this little um piece that notch mm -hmm. should go just on the edge of the circle. Okay. So you so might have, yeah, you might want to start the yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. And if you do that, they'll sort of naturally start to follow. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was doing this at home and my dog ate the last one. Oh. <laughs> I looked up and he had this yellow thing in his mouth. I'm like, no. Did you get all 12? Yeah. So if you want to what other color are you going to use? So you can go ahead and do that. Um, just making another one. Like, so you'll have two of, of these. One, one of the beds. Thank 
those of you that are finished making both of your um, purples or spirals, if you this um, star templates, you'll need uh, uh, well, you'll need two different colors. So you can come and choose the colors you would like, and then cut these out, and um, you're going to cut along the dark lines. So this part will be a little fringe. So you want to do that. Okay.
So what's our timing look like? Do we have both colors done? Are we ready to weave? Does everybody have um, their two colors done? The two sets done? And also, if you, you know, if you're working with a partner, you can choose, you can join, you know, theirs and yours together also. If you want to work as a, as a pair. Oh, looks like Heidi is ready. One of our virtual participants. Lena is ready.
Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share. I see my photo here. Yes. So we we want to lay the two colors the opposite direction over each other and try to align the centers as much as possible. So you can see that the blue is going in the opposite direction of the pink here. So your two colors are opposite in the way that they're kind of spiraling. Aileen, do we put circles on both sides? Um, no, you don't have to put circles on both sides. Now you're going to work on trying to bring the back color up to the front one at a time. So you can see in the picture that I brought one pink through the slit and another pink through the slit, skipping one blue. And I'm going to you're going to work all the way around bringing out that one color that's behind up to the front. It'll it'll start looking like a sun. So this is what it should look like when it's done. So I'm going to stop that real quick and go back to my Oh no, this so I'm doing the same thing here. Let's see if it can. I brought one of the green forward. I just have to choose a place to start, and then I'm going to start. Skipping that pink and then bringing another, the next one over. Be really patient and careful with your pieces, especially if they're not um, completely dry yet. Just kind of move that color over and bring the color you want to the front. Two. Go to the next 
one. Three. Oh, Sean, do you have this? No, we're struggling. I'm struggling with the bottom. Yeah, I need this one. Okay. Yeah. The next one. They have some questions. Oh, sure. Okay, so I'm going to use this. Okay. And I take the nail because it was going to be so. Okay. I don't know, you might have two. Like this one to me looks like. I just <sighs> okay. I think it's a tape. It's all right. I'm <laughs> You can keep on. Okay. Yeah. So you put this over. You can try. How about you try? Yeah. yeah. Or do you want to do it? I'm confident to this one. Maybe this one. This one. Yeah. This one. Okay. I have to take on this I know, I just made a are you just pulling? <coughs> oh, one of my No, I can't. <laughs> And just keep on going so like the white is coming. Yeah, cool. And keep on working on this center piece. Like so this one. We're just working on the center. So don't don't worry about the ones. And then think about which one is underneath this red. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 
Started bend your brain a little bit. Yeah. We should have one that comes over this one. And I, I may have messed up your initial. So how is everyone doing? Do you have our son? Mm -hmm. 
So see, there's like the initial diamond. And then um, under to make that. And then keep on, yeah, do that one. That's just going to go under the paint. Blast. Oh, yeah. so, no, I would keep on working like one, one at a time. Like, so this one goes under. So are you doing one at a time? Or? Mm -hmm. uh, just keep on going around. This is where we may have. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Never get that. Yeah. Yeah, yours looks good. So you want to keep on um keep on going out like work one all around and then do the next one all the way. Otherwise it gets a little it's it a little confusing. Okay. No, 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 that looks it looks right, but just um you might want to finish doing your fingers close. And then start doing the yeah. So is it pretty much Where's the rest of it? Oh, yeah, rest the red. No, this was the red one with the blue. Sorry, I'm glad. You look like you were good at this. Can you get a stack? I did stats. I just don't know. Really? I took stats. I cried all the time. Oh, no. It was online. And I almost got it. Like a point and a half. And then you I was happy I didn't get a date. On top. I guess I was trying to like over under. Yeah, I think about it. And what do you use for right here? No, when you put it on. Oh, yeah, for a moment. So, Jelly and Jelly. Jelly and Jelly. Do we have any questions in the chat? No. 
You know what else is really And this is I know. Some money. Marco, tell me about this. Okay. You got it. Is one there? That's what I'm saying. I got it. 
He's going to be taking his place. He knows. Okay. I also like, you know, I mean, <laughs> so, like, when you start the first, the oh, everywhere, oh, yeah, right. I haven't been there in a while. I don't know. Easy skill. I can't even think about it. Yellow. It's like instead of taking. So I don't think they're there. I don't like them. You have. She has them. I don't like them anymore. From there, I have an extra hand keep going all the way around. Yeah. I mean, the Japanese. So if you think about the bottom and like what direction. Oh, okay. I know people aren't gonna do. I just think I'm not interested. Oh, yeah. It's so it's like, it looks like you have this started. It's just sort of sometimes it, it's, good. it's hard to get it tight. Like you might have to sort of adjust it so that you have a Yeah, I think it's just okay. I don't, yeah, I don't want to do it right about it. And I'm going to do like a big sea boil Any questions or comments? No. 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 So I just wanted to know what the timing is. So how is, is everybody ready for the next step or questions? I also wanted to mention that it should be, the top layer should be like loose enough for you to see that you could, um, you could twist it as tight as you need to twist it. So like if I move this, I can see like tightness is where what I want. So more close to the center, but I should be able to like reposition it. So it's centered and symmetric. Because all of that color that was in the back is now on top. Once you get it to where you feel like it's it's tight and it's kind of symmetric, sometimes your pieces are on top of each other. So you might have to like get a nail or with your fingers, make sure that they can just get into the, as close to the center as possible. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring out now the back color is pink on mine. I'm going to bring one of those to the front so that I'm starting now the pattern of weaving. So for example, right here, I would bring pink up. Uh, so I have pink. I can start bringing pink up right there. And then just work all the way around bringing the pink back or the back color back up to the front. Oh, if I show you a picture here. This is the sun that we were looking to get. And now we're going to start working back around to bring that second color up. Now, once you get it pretty firm, you can start working on one side if you want to, but I would think you want to work one more time all the way around to start getting the pattern of the weaving throughout the center. And gradually that's gonna start just forming a bowl on its own. And you might need some paper clips. There should be paper clips there to start holding it in place. But we wanted to start working through the center all the way around, bringing the next color back to the front.
Helen, do we have an example of what it looks like? I don't have a uh, finished example here. Do we have one upstairs? Yeah. I'll see if I can find it. Nice. There's one that's not closed, but it's pretty much done in my office. I heard about this day um, where it was a slip in the way explaining to me. Imagine how these, how this is a technique, maybe not with the curved paper, but how um, people made baskets, like starting with the circular case. Oh, oh, okay. oh, my God. So, yeah, this is a, uh, almost finished. So your patience can be rewarded. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that looks like that. You should start off of that. And you just keep on working, and um, and then you put the put the other circle on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it actually will start um, making the shape of a as a of, of a sphere um, as you continue weaving and pulling it tight. Just the way the the um, pieces are formed just makes the the sphere, but it has to be tight. <laughs> well, and you know, this is a, this doesn't have to be finished in the next fifteen minutes. You have all weekend to to work on it. You guys are very talented. For real, <clears throat> I don't have those skills. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Would someone guess yes. if you could uh, show the sphere on Zoom? I want to take the screen away from. Um, well, can we hold it up to yeah. the camera? Wherever the camera is. <laughs> Can everybody see that? I pulled that up. Yeah, I mean, I can. So once you get that second ring over, you can just start doing your in and out every other, whatever side you like to start on. Amy, do you have a picture of one that's finished? So those that are on attending virtually can see one close up. Uh, let's see, I think. So Elena is showing some pictures that were in the middle. There you go. Is there like a, a video on that? Eileen, looking at the, the time, we were at about 11.20. Would you want to, do you have the pieces of the star? That, um, I know some of the participants here have cut that out. Mm -hmm. Doing up one, how to make one piece of that. Want, to, want me to stop here and go to the star? Uh, sure. That's it. Would everybody like to see how to make sure. like a piece? It's sort of a, a mod, module, modular. So if you make one piece, then up. And you put them together and it makes our okay. light. Let me. And I think those of you attending virtually may have um, received the template for this. This is something that we're we're working on. Does everyone have them cut out or we need to? Those of you that are here um, are attending virtually, did you get a chance to cut out? Um, and those, of, those of us that are here in, at the Ink Center have the pieces cut out, at least the all the um, Separate pieces. And I think they have um, maybe that stuff. We have it cut. So they have the fringe. All right. So you, we could just get one of each color. I have mine cut out, but I don't have my slits in there yet. We would want to make this cuts all the way up to the dotted line. Sorry. Thank you. Dotted line. So that they should look like that. And you're going to weave one of each color into each other to make one point of the star. 
So what we want to do is you're going to make sure that they're going to be um one of them has to flip over. And you're going to weave one into the other piece. You do have to use eight I think the hardest thing on this one is just to keep them stabilized as you're trying to weave at the same time. I usually start from the top and then just kind of slide it in, but can use whatever works for you. Yeah, it takes a lot of gentle pushing, and I found that I use uh, tape to secure it on the end. Are there any questions in the Nope. Okay. I've been answering them. Okay. I'm amazed we have some people that have like persevered with the with the spear in our <laughs> see once you get it, it's it's uh and actually my first time doing 
I had to crash my first one and <laughs> completely start all over again. Aileen, do you have um, a picture of one of those finished that you could show? The star? If not, I can show one um, here on the Zoom or uh, on our doc cam. This is a star. <clears throat> so each of those, each of the five modules you make, you make a crease down the middle and then you glue those together. You will have to glue the ends though of the, um, the edges of the strips because you wanna keep them in place and keep them flat down. But don't do that until you're completely done weaving. Right. So again, thinking this is definitely thinking about applying what you experience with basic weaving in a different different way. Thank you, Aileen. We go ahead and, and go back to our um, Um, so just wanted to show you, finish our time together by showing you some different um, ways weaving has been used throughout di in different cultures. Um, we have some examples from Greece, Japan, Maya, um, Maya culture, and Egypt. So those of you that are educators, thinking of how you know you're um, exploring content that has your students delving into different histories. Uh, this is a great way to explore how different cultures use weaving to make simple, you know, simple tools and um, incorporate it into their, their art. Um, we also wanted to share that many of the ideas that we explore come from um, Friedrich Froebel, who is considered a, the, the father of kindergarten. He actually lived in the 18th century in, in Germany. And at that time, children really didn't go to school. They were actually, a lot of them were um, working in factories or you know, put to work. And he, he definitely felt, felt that that wasn't the right place for them. And they needed the chance to, um, to learn and grow in an environment that was that was conducive to young children. So he developed these different gifts. Some of you, some of which you can see here. The uh, first one was the sphere, the block, and the cylinder. And just <clears throat> um, explored ways that children could, could um, learn about their world around them through these different objects. And he also was really um, invested in, in teaching um, others how to teach children. So with his, these are some examples of weaving that were made by his kindergartners in the early 1900s. But these kindergartners were not the students, they were actually the teachers. 
um, at that time, the kindergartners were the, the teachers that were at his, um, that he was sharing his ideas with. So again, just like you did today with the leaving, they were exploring their ideas um, on these like cards, you can see, on, on leaving techniques and what things that they wanted to share with their students. What, what by doing this, what could their students um, learn about the world around them? And so we really thank you for coming today and playing with us. Uh, and feel free to, to take, those of you that are here, if you want to take some extra materials with you to continue exploring at home, feel free to do so. Um, we invite you to join us at our next play shop on March 25th. And we'll be exploring automata, toys that move, so making things that move. Fun. Um, also, if you if you're an educator and you want a certificate of attendance, um, feel free to leave your e your name and email, and I can get that to you on Monday. And those of you that are attending virtually, if you would like a certificate, um, feel free to just put your name in the chat and we'll gather that information. Thank you for joining us today and continue to share your pictures with us of your learning. Any any thoughts for those attending virtually? Oh, Anything you would you know, you'd like to share? Well, yeah. okay. Look, looks like we got a few spheres. Yeah, yeah. It's a great, great uh, way to, to teach. Um, and not necessarily, I mean, severe, depending on the age of your students, but precision and perseverance. Because uh, definitely have to, takes a little bit of perseverance to get it started. And the more um, precise you are with your, with your, um, with your gluing and making that foundation, the better it turns, it turns out. So. All right. And thank you for joining us today. And hopefully we'll see you next next time in March at our next play shop. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a good one. Enjoy your afternoon.